بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله كالذي نقول وخير مما نقول أحسن كل شيء خلقه فالكل بعناية مشغول أعطى كل شيء خلقه وكل كل أمر إليه موكول له في كل أمر حكمة وإن ذهلت عنها عقول نحمده تبارك وتعالى حمدا وهو بالثناء عليه موصول ونرجوه العصمة من الحرام في كل مشروب ومأكول وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الحي الذي لا يموت ولا يزول شاهد لنفسه بالوحدانية وشاهد له الملائكة والعدول لا يسأل عما يفعل وكل من عداه مسؤول لا يشغله شأن عن شأن وغيره عن شأنه مشغول لا يرد سائله ودعاء الصالحين لديه مقبول وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله دعوة الخليل وقرة عين إسماعيل وبشر بن البطول شفي مريض بريقه وبلمسه نشط الكسول قالت الأعراب والكهال بالظن فإذا هو بالوحي يقول له مقام الأوحد وقد أصاب المقربين خمول أنا لها أنا لها له مقالة ونفسي ثم نفسي كل أنبياء تقول اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على بدر البدور وعلى آله وأصحابه ووقنا يا ربنا بحبهم كل الشرور My dear brothers and sisters, I begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best way fits His glory and His majesty. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from our evil deeds and to forgive our shortcomings. My dear brothers, inshallah, this topic today is the first night of Ramadan, inshallah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free them from the hellfire and to make us from the people which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their fasting and accept also their prayers and make us from the people of Laylatul Qadr. Allahumma Ameen. My dear brothers, the topic today is very dear topic to me and I think is to all of us. Before we go to there, the reason I make it this recording is not live because as you know, the lecture we was given before was in 9.30 and this is the month of Ramadan, is the month of the Quran. So that is the time where we need to spend with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by standing in front of Him in prayers and reciting the word of Allah. So therefore I decided to record this so that when you guys have a spare time to reflect on it with the family, with yourself, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put some mercy on us and on our family. Allahumma ameen. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, one of the biggest ni'mah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the believers, and that is the good news for you and me today. Because Allah Azawajal has chosen you and me to become from among the believers. I want you to think for one moment and reflect in the word of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Prophet says, In Allah yu'ti dunya liman yuhib wa man la yuhib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this, the worldly life, the wealth of the worldly life to the one he loves and to one he doesn't love. Do not love. There is no different. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not give a deen, a religion except to the person who he loves. So since you become among the believers, then this is a sign Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. Tonight is a topic about the treasures for success. Especially we are in a month which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiply our deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared the heavens and has prepared the angels and has prepared the earth so we can get His mercy and we can get His blessings. As we mentioned in the previous lecture, tonight there is an emergency call happening in the heavens. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closed the gates of the hellfire and opened the gates of the Jannah and he locked the shayateen and he called into us, O seeker of goodness come and O seeker of evil stop. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us these beautiful chances. So we have to find any way to get close to Allah. That's why the Salaf al-Salih, when the Ramadan was coming, they was closing any books beside this book. So we have to reflect in this month, my dear brothers, maybe this could be the last month for some of us. And even some of us can maybe not reach the end of Ramadan. But if you make the true intention to finish this book, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put it for you just like you have done. As we mentioned in the hadith before. So tonight's topic, my dear brothers and sisters, is going to be talk about, we're going to be talking about one word. We've been ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always mention it after the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you focus on it, my dear brothers and sisters, one word which will remove your stress, your difficulties, your hard times, one word, if you say it with your sincerity, will forgive your sins. One word which will keep you near to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to profit in the day of judgment. One word which Allah will raise your rank ten times if you say this word from your heart. One word will show you direction, inshallah, towards the Jannah. One word which your dua will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for sure, you're wondering, Shaykh, what is that word? The word which all of us, or most of us, inshallah, they're using it, when they say Muhammad, they say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is that word, my dear brothers and sisters. We, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah has put order on us to say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This give us to understand this human being was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was mentioned in the scriptures before by his prophecies, by his signs, by his characteristics. He's a role model for the old words. What I mean for the old words, the one we know and the one we do not know. The best human being, the best father, the best husband, the best leader, the best neighbor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe him in the Quran when he says, وَمَا أَرْسَلَّاكَ إِلَّا وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Allah sent, Allah says, I have not sent you on Muhammad except as a mercy to the world. Alameen, just like he used in the Quran and Fatiha, Rabbil Alameen, the worlds, from the humans and from the jinn. My brother, so that's why we need to understand who is this Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? We need to understand the words we use, the prayer we use after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What that mean? What that do to your heart? You know, my dear brothers and sisters, this Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was never called in Quran by his name. The way how Allah has called the previous messengers. Like he says, Ya Adam. Uskun anta wa zawjuka al-jannah. Ya Nuh, ihbit bis-salam. He's talking, Ya Zakaria, Ya Yahya, Ya Musa, Ya Isa. He mentioned every single messenger by his name. But when he coming to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Isa, he called all of them in Quran by names. When we come to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya ayyuha nabi O you messenger. Then he also say, Ya ayyuha rasulu ballig. Also he called, O you prophet of God. Even when he used the name of Muhammad, he has to put after him Rasulullah. Muhammadun Rasulullah. Subhanallah. Muhammadun Rasulullah. So my dear brothers, you have to ponder why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
never used the Prophet ﷺ calling him by name because he's dear to him. He's near to him, he's most beloved human being. That's why he chose him for the last message. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even forbid us and forbid Sahaba to we call the Prophet ﷺ just like we call one another. He said, لا تجعل دعاء الرسول بينكم كدعاء بعضكم بعضا. He said, do not call the name of Muhammad just like you call one another without specifying and without using Muhammad Rasul. Oh, Ya Rasul Allah, oh, Ya Nabi Allah, oh, Muhammad Rasulullah, oh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is that messenger which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has swear by his life. He used, he said, وَلَعَمْرُكَ إِنَّهُمْ لَفِي سَكْرَتِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ By your life, O Muhammad, he said, indeed, they were intoxicated. They were lost. He's swearing by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell you and me how dear is this man to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brother and sister, when we talk about the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he has sent as a mercy for the worlds. I want you to imagine how your life and my life will be without having this prophet. How you will live without knowing this prophet, without having his message. is the best thing to know, my brother, look around you. How many people today, because they do not have this messenger of Allah in their life, they don't, they don't know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Some of them, they worship in stones. Some of them, they worship in rats and mouses and cows and snakes. And some of them worship in human beings. Make it equal to Allah subhanahu, equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't you think this is one of the biggest ni'mah? Which wallahi, who can, from us can say because we really have done something to deserve this message, messenger in our lives. But Allah Azawajal, from His mercy, from His kindness, He has given us this beautiful gift. So use it, my brother, and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Man. This is a favor. Great favor upon us from Allah to the believers. إِذْ بَعَدَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا رسولا من أنفسهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين. Allah says, I have certainly I have given you a great favor upon the believers when He sent from among them self a human being, not the angel, from among them self a messenger, reciting to them the words of Allah subhanahu wa taala, His verses. And purifying their hearts, purifying their soul from the evil deeds. And turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he taught them and teach them the book. The laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to every believer. Well, hikmah and the wisdom. And Allah is telling us, even though they had before, they were in a great error. They were lost. My dear brothers and sisters, man is something way greater than ni'mah. I know in English they sound the same blessing and blessing, but the ni'mah in Quran usually Allah has given it to you because you have done something. Either you praise Him or you are kind to your parents or you're kind to your neighbor or you're kind to somebody, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send you because of that some blessings. As Allah says, قُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا Surah an يُرْسِلُ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا And he sent from the heavens a rain and blessing. Why? وَيُمْدِدُكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ And he give you wealth and family. Why? Because you are making istighfar. So because of this, Allah has given you the ni'mah. But the man, what Allah has mentioned in the Quran, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ The man is when Allah give it to you something and you don't even deserve it. La ilaha illallah. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is that messenger which in day of judgment, just imagine, in a day of judgment, everybody will run for his life. A scary time. 
The time what Yom Ayafirul Maru Min Akhi, Allah says in that day the brother will run away from his brother, from his mother, from his father, from his family, from his kids. Everybody in that day will be busy with his own soul. Because he knows he's going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sees the earth is in crash. He sees the sun is above him. He sees the angels flying around. He sees the people they are drowned in their sweat. And some people will be dragged by their faces to hellfire. And hellfire is getting closer to them. And everybody looking for his Self, even the Anbiya in that day said, Nafsi, Nafsi, my soul, my soul. They worry what will happen to them, except Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will stand under the arsh and he will cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he say, Ana laha, ana laha, ummati, ummati, I am for it, I am for it, my ummah, my ummah. He will beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to intercess between us and him. My dear brothers and sisters, a beautiful hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Az, which is in Sahih Muslim. When the Prophet was standing in prayer and he was reciting the word of Allah in Quran, when the Ibrahim was saying, Rabbi innahum adlalna kathiran min nasi faman tabi'ani fa innahu minni. He said, Oh Allah, they have led astray many among mankind, the idols and the False worshippers, he said, but whoever follows me, he is from amongst me. And then he was reciting the words of the Isa salam in Quran when Allah says, In tu'adhibhum fa innahum ibadak wa in taghfir lahum fa innaka anta ghafurur rahim. Yes, Allah says, if you punish them, they are your slaves. But if you forgive them, you indeed, you are the almighty and all wise. The Prophet ﷺ was raising his hand, hand towards Allah and crying and saying, My Ummah, my Ummah. Allah sent Jibreel and asked him, and he knows. He said, go and ask Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, why he asking for, why he's weeping, why he's crying. And the Jibreel went to him and he said, I'm crying of my, for my Ummah, for my people to be saved. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Jibreel, go and tell to the Prophet Muhammad, we will please you with regard to your ummah and will never displease you. This is the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is crying for you during the night prayers. Did you, my dear brothers, did we ever cry? Did we ever share a tears when you see you have gone against the sunnah of Muhammad وسلم? When you see yourself in front of the mirror and you don't have nothing of the sunnah of the Prophet in front of you. When you walk in the street and before you go you see there is no dress on you. My dear sister, the way how the daughter of the Prophet was dressed. The way how the wife of the Prophet was dressed. Did you ever cry because you disobey Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa My brother, the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did we ever ponder in this word and reflect and ask ourselves and ask you Iman, you have to taste the sweetness of the word sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's part of the Iman and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet says in hadith, ذَاكَ طَعْمُ iman. He said you will taste the sweetness of the Iman if you maradiya billahi rabba. If you believe and choose Allah to be your Lord. وَبِ مُحَمَّدِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ رَسُولًا وَبِ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا So my question is, did you ever thought what the word صلى الله عليه وسلم mean? The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, لِكُلِّ النَّبِيُّ حديث أبو هريرة متفق عليه لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ دَعْوَةٌ مُسْتَجَابَةٌ Every messenger of Allah, he has a special dua, Allah has given it to him, which that dua will be accepted. And the Prophet says, وَأَنَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ أَخْتَبِئَهُ أَخْتَبِ دَعْوَةِ شَفَاعَةً لِأُمَّتِهِ فِي الْآخِرَةِ He said, that dua, what Allah has given it to me, he said, I'm saving it. I'm preserving it so I can use for my ummah, not for my daughter, not for my kids, not from my wife, we say from my ummah in the day of judgment. The day where we need the most, that dua 
the Prophet, this is the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My brothers, Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in Hadith Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, which is in Sahih al-Jamia, Qala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ra'ani wa amana bi. Give the glad tiding, good news. Give a biggest tree in Jannah to those who saw me and they believed in me. La ilaha illallah. Then he says, Thumma tuba, thumma tuba, thumma tuba liman amana bi walam yarani. He's talking about you and me, my brother. And he said, then give the glad tidings and glad tidings and glad news and tidings to those who believed in me and they never saw me. La ilaha illallah. That's why my brothers and sisters, the meaning of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the topic where we need this word. Wallahi, this word we need to sit with our families, with our kids. Ask yourself when you choose a day or an hour every single day to be alone. And just repeat, moisture your mouth with the word sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't you see that? The gifts Allah has given it to you. The biggest dhikr you can, you can imagine. Therefore, my brothers, Sahaba, they sacrificed themselves for the Prophet Wasallam. They believed on him. They loved him. So therefore, the Westerners, they get surprised when they read about the description of the Prophet Wasallam. They get surprised. How can this poor man Orphaned, with no father, with no mother, with a weak family, alone. And the people accept his message. People enter in Islam and they never want to leave it back. Even if they have to lose their life. What happened? Why these people were like this? Because they knew who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They knew he was... He was, about, he was about to kill himself from the, from the grief and, and sorrow when he see their people, they don't believe in him. He wants to save them from the hellfire. He wants to save me and you from the hellfire. Allah says, فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِيٌ نَفْسِكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ إِن لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسَفَ He said, perhaps, O oh Muhammad, you're going to kill yourself through the grief over them. They do not want, because he was sad. He wants to save his uncle. He wants to save everybody who Allah sent him for that reason. So the Sahaba, they knew. They knew his Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. They got hurt if the Prophet was getting hurt. That's why when the Sahaba was asked, what is the, which day in your life were the toughest days for you? They respond in the battle of Uhud. You know why? Because in that battle, the Prophet Wasallam was hurt. They can accept anything, but they couldn't accept the Prophet ﷺ to get hurt. My dear brother and sister, the love they have for the Prophet, that love doesn't mean it's only with Sahaba. That love is still exists today. We have the hadith of the Prophet in Sahih Muslim, hadith Abu, Abu Hurairah. The Prophet is talking about people among us, and may Allah make us from those people. He say, Ashaddu. From the people amongst the people who will come after me, they never saw me and they will love me so much to the extent, to the level they will wish to sacrifice their, their wealth and their family just to see me. Just to see me. That's why Allah just says, Among the believers, there are men. They keep the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Among them there are who passed away, but among them there are yet people to come. He's talking about me and you. So we are among those people and we ask Allah to be among those people. So that's why my brothers, the Sahaba, they got hurt when the Prophet was hurt. But do you know when they asked the Prophet وسلم, what was the toughest day for you in your life? He said, when I was in Taif. When he was in Taif. Mecca, the shut door for da'wah. Then he went in Taif to call the people for da'wah, to call the people to Allah, and they cut, shut off the, the door. 52 years old man. 
the mushrikeen and disbelievers, they choose their kids and they choose their slaves with sticks and stone and they start throwing to the old man, the messenger of God, throwing stones and rocks until the Prophet starts bleeding and he ran away from Taif. And yet, when the angels came to him and asked him to ask anything from Allah so he can, he can turn the, the mountain upon them, Rahmatan lil alameen. He said, no. No, maybe among them somebody will come and say, Rabbi Allah, will say, my Lord is Allah. This is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent the other group to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In Taif, he sent another group of, the, of the, his creation to, to listen to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says in Quran, وَيَصَّرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفَرًا مِّنَ الْجِنِّ Say so we sent to you a Muhammad, there is groups, Nafar, from the, among the jinn. Al-Quran. And they start listening to the words of Allah. Soon the Prophet came to Taif, he, do, he didn't start crying and stuff, he started reading the words of Allah. Allah says, Yastami'oon Al-Quran. They start listening to the words of Allah. فَلَمَّا حَضَرُوا And when they came near, قَالُوا أَنصِتُوا And they told to each other, pay attention. فَلَمَّا قُضِيَ وَلَّوْا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِمْ مُنْذِرِينَ And when the Prophet finished the message, they accept the deen. They didn't, Allah said, they didn't go back to their people as a believer. They were back to the people as a warners. Reminders to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believed in spot. My brothers and my sisters, love him, respect him, follow him. This messenger was for all mankind. And I'm giving a message to all human beings today, to the believers and to the not believers, to the Muslims and not Muslims. Look and learn about this Prophet. By Allah, if you learn with your open heart about this Prophet, you will have no, cho you have no choice but to accept him. If you see his life, if you see what he has done, if you see what Allah brought to this messenger of God, you don't have no choice but to accept him. Look in the Western scholars. The honest one, the sincere one, like George Bernard Shaw, like Lamartine, like Michael Hart. Look what they say about this prophet of Allah. My dear brothers and sisters, the only way to get to Allah and the only way to achieve the love of Allah to you, you have to obey the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, Qul. This is the Ibn Abbas, this is the ayat of Imtihan. The eye of test. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي If you, if you love Allah, then follow me. What is the result? يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah will love you. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And He will forgive your sins. This is the qualities by following this messenger of Allah, by keeping as a role model in your life, in your family, in your kids. My brother, in this Ramadan, in this Ramadan, the best way to moisture your mouth with the word of, of the word Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is a beautiful book, Shama'il Muhammadiyya, the description, the quali qualities of the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is translated in English, and read every night, sit with your family and read one, one hadith about the Prophet Muhammad, about his look, how his face was, how his arm was, how his chest was, how his clothes was, how he was sleeping, how he was talking, how he was eating, his prayers, everything, how he was walking, everything, you kids, we need to know. My dear brother and sister, our kids, they don't know who is his role model. They don't know nothing of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So therefore, my brothers, we own it to ourselves in Ramadan. Because wallahi, if you see, if you see what the meaning and what the beauty and the, and the reward you're getting by saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will never stop. 
So my question tonight to you will be, did you really feel, what do you feel when you say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Ask yourself, how much salawat do you send to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How much do you know about the word sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Salah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Abu Ali mentioned in Bukhari, Sunnah of Ibn Abbas. He says the salah from the Allah to the Prophet sallallahu he is to exalt his name in the front of the angels and praise him. And also salah from Allah to the messenger, he is rahmah. His mercy, mercy for him. And it's also his maghfira to remove the sins from him. And also mean to rank, his, rank him higher and higher in Jannah. This was the salah from Allah towards the Prophet. And from the angels, this is dua. And from us, we invoke we ask in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give to this Prophet this message. This position, this rank, to have mercy on him, to exalt in him, because what he has done for us. So, one of the biggest dhikr, biggest dhikr, my brothers and sisters, what you have to use it in Ramadan, beside the prayers, beside the Quran, is to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The name of Allah is there. Allahumma salli. Oh Allah, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you... Obey his order when Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, sallu alayhi. All you who believe, invoke, give salah to him. And also, you put the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam together with the angels. So that Allah azawajal has brought us this message to us by saying, Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. Indeed, Allah confers blessing upon the Prophet. And his angels do the same. If Allah starts with himself, telling you enough, enough to understand who Al Prophet Muhammad is in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the angels, all angels from Hamilatul Arsh all the way, every single angel Allah Azzawajal has created. Then Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. He's talking to me and you, all oh, you who believe. Sallu alayhi. All oh, you who believe, send blessing upon him. Wa sallimu taslima. And also, grant him peace. My brothers and my sisters, the virtues, we know the virtues are about remembering Allah. Most of us know the virtues of remembering Allah. But very few of us know the virtues, the virtues of sending salawat to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By sending salawat to the Prophet, my brothers and sisters, I want you to feel it. You confess that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our God who deserves to be worshipped. By sending salawat to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you confess that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent messengers. And you confess that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By giving salawat to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you admit that this messenger must be followed, must be obeyed. Then which dhikr can be bigger than this? So the question for me tonight is, my dear brothers, do you feel when you send salawat to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you feel the closeness, the closest to the Prophet? My dear brother, sister, listen to this beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's talking to you and me. Inna awla nasi bi yawm al akhtharuhum salah. The closest person who will be near me in day of judgment is the one who sent me most salawat, most salah upon me. This hadith, hadith uh, uh, Ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah Ibn Mas'ud, and hadith is in Tirmidhi, Bisanad, in Hassan. And also there is other shawahid of the hadith in Bayhaqi from Abi Umamata, when the Prophet said, Man kana akhtharuhum alayya salah, kana aqrabuhum minni manzila. The one who gave more salawat to me. 
will be way closer, closer to me. And you know what that means to be closer to the Prophet? That means you are in Jannah to fear those. Because that's what the Prophet is going to be. How are you going to reach there if you are not closer to him? You know what it means to be close to Allah subhanahu to the Prophet sallam, you will be with him yawm al qiyamah Can somebody will be with the Prophet? Yes. Listen to this beautiful hadith Aisha radiallahu anha narrated to us. Man from the Ansar, he came to the Prophet. They loved the Prophet so much. Every time they go home from the masjid, soon he mentioned Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brother, keep, keep moisture in your mouth of salawat. This is ibadah. Every time they mention the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he goes back to the masjid. And the Prophet said, why you came? He said, so I missed you. I remember you and I missed you. And then he goes back home and still he remember the Prophet and he looking, he goes back to see the face of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one day the Sahabi came and he was, he was afraid, he was scared, he was sad. And the Prophet said, what happened? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I remembered I remembered you and I remember myself and I remember death. He said, when we die, you will be in Jannah way high and I will be in Jannah somewhere low. How can I stay in Jannah? He, he, he doesn't want to be even in Jannah without seeing the Prophet Muhammad. He said, how can I stay in Jannah and I cannot see you? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know the Prophet couldn't answer to him? He couldn't. Because he doesn't speak from himself, he speaks with the revelation until Jibreel alayhi salam brought to him the ayah Allah says whoever whosoever obey Allah and his messenger they will be, those will be with the ones who of Allah has, uh, upon whom Allah has bestowed a favor upon them. Prophets and Siddiqeen, the steadfast, the affirms of the truth and also Shuhada, the martyrs and also the righteous Salihin. And this is the best companions you can be when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the result is, my dear brothers and sisters, you will be with the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of the reasons to be close to him is to send him salawat. To send him salawat day and night, every time you can. And choose a time to sit you alone, read the book of Allah and take a break and give salawat to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Either by saying, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أو by saying اللهم صل على محمد أو by saying صل الله عليه وسلم any of these duas Allah سبحانه وتعالى will accept it for you my dear brother sister we're gonna stop right here and we will continue إن شاء الله in the next class about the the virtues and the and the beauty and the benefits of saying صل الله عليه وسلم my brothers and my sister, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us and to make us from those people who keep moisture in their mouth by saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Choose a time, choose a night, stand up one hour and with your family and let, teach them how to do salawat. And as we always know, the best way to do by yourself not in congregation, not by hanging in a halaqah. This is not from the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is from the innovation in our deen. So sit between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and send salawat to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah accept it from us, my dear brother and sister. May Allah free our necks from the hellfire. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather all of us with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته